Hello there, and welcome back to episode four of my tutorial series for Against the Storm. We are sitting here in the Pioneer difficulty, and we're pretty close to winning the game here. All in all, there's only a few more steps ahead of us for us to get that game done. It might not look like much, but we are currently really on a hot streak here. We got already several of the objectives available and uh, ready to go. I'm merely not doing that right now, as I don't want to implode my or explode my population too hard. But <clears throat> seeing the situation as it is right now, we might need a slight influx of people. So we're going to go for that human villages uh, quest. There we go. And let's see. So we get three different choices where to... For, for service buildings, two choices, and a housing project for the third choice. So, service buildings are a new category. They offer the opportunity to consume service products, like beer and wine, and in return, people get happy. But also, you can put workers in there that, for example, give a plus three for global resolve if we have three workers in here, or here we get a hostility reduce for the amount of stuff we sacrificed in the temple. And there's religion and education available in the temple. So when we check it out here, our population likes leisure and they like religion, they like education, but all in all, we have no production for the goods that are requested here. That's a pretty typical situation in the very early game and at that point I strongly recommend you to pick up the building that has the better passive effect. So in this regard we totally go for the tavern as the effect that it provides is really good for us. So we have another hearth now incoming probably. Nah we don't. We can't put it down space-wise. So the next houses go there. I always try to build at least three hearths per city, as this is the point where I find it still manageable. The pressure of uh, food, uh, fuel production, and uh, versus the amount of um, benefit I take. More than three hearths, then yeah, well, you need a proficient uh, fuel industry for that, and uh, a lot of other things. Ah, oh, well, let's do this little windy road there. Why not? And move the other woodcutter down here. <clears throat> so the downside of that bakery is it's going to stay there forever because we cannot move it. Warehouses can also not be moved. And by this point, well, we still not end up at the uh, point where we have a lack of gears. It's mostly due to the difficulty level, so we can easily put down yet another one of these. I'm not putting down any workers into the plantation as of this year. We don't would we wouldn't get any rewards for that anyways. Instead, let's put a lizard into the bakery and order them to do pottery for us. We got a lot of clay here in the city, and we're going to use our sea marrow for that. I try to avoid using wood, as wood is a very important resource used by many industries, and raw wood, I try to avoid it to use it in recipes wherever I can, because it quickly can drain your resources quite quickly. All right, so we can either pack 20 packs of luxury goods and give them away, or we try to find more of these ancient tablets and open glades. I'm vouching for this one, as currently adventuring seems to work out quite nicely. And half 16 beavers sounds like a darned easy thing to do compared to the three different foodstuffs that we require. So here is another easy selection of things. We can now pretty quickly do a victory um, or perform a victory with that. So we can do a little bit of a calculation here. We have one point available. Tool-wise, we own 20 of them, so that ain't a problem at all. We got two more points here, so we are already at this point, victory point-wise. And we are now so darned happy that the lizards go happy just 
because. We are also going to build that tavern, as these buildings are really good in so far as they offer a lot of workspace for people. It's just important that you put it into the vicinity of a warehouse so the transportation um, length isn't too high to transport things from one spot to the other. Okay, we got a lot of amber. Next storm is coming on in, but uh, hardly bothering us. Here again, if I'd be favoring the lizards, they'd be now going even happy. Wonderful. Okay, so if you have a setup like this, you notice that it's really easy to survive. The hostility of the forest doesn't hardly go up because we're constantly putting up things that lower it, be it cornerstones or other little tricks that increase our resolve. There's a lot of things that you can do and should do to keep your situation stable. So we're going to put here these guys into the tavern, but I'm going to disable the luxury um, resource here because I want to be able to give away that wine. Oh, they, they already carried over there. Whatever. If I get really unlucky, we need to... Uh... Ah, yeah, here. Yeah. So, did somebody already drink that stuff? Seriously? They're that fast? Or are they just ignoring my command? Huh. Interesting. Let's see how that evolves. Maybe these first five were just already ordered. All right, silent looting is a wonderful one. We gain a hostility decrease for every cash that we processed. Route delivery line would be something if we wouldn't be living in Root City. So, I don't know. That doesn't really sound well to me. So at this point, I am trying to get the pack that has the most interesting resources. In this regard, it's the one with tools and all. Because tools rules. Now, bad puns aside, we are going to open up yet another glade. Because at this point, we just need to keep the, the thing here running. The beaver majority quest is also almost through. We just need more ancient tablets here from somewhere. All right, another global reduction totem coming up hot. But in this scenario, I am actually going to take the reward that yields the uh, crystallized dew. Simple reason, tools give me caches, caches give me hostility reduction. So I'm more interested in that. And check this out. We even found yet another one of these fertile, po fertile soil patches. That's just bonkers. Yeah. And at this point, we're basically just, uh, well, driving it home, like I like to call it. You know, we're just now going to assign a couple of people here at these points. We could have opened that box for yet another ancient ta uh, tablet, but, uh, well, in all honesty, it's not the only way to get it done. So... So Hilda is back. I'm uh, pa pausing the game for a sec to find a good spot for our hearth. This is one of the situations where you definitely want your uh, woodcutters to do that thing here. Because we got really, really lucky here yet again. All of these resource uh, nodes are processable for us. So yeah, we're going to go down there quite soon as well. So, I really mucked up the, the wine quest by not disabling it fast enough, didn't I? Jeez. It's thirsty, thirsty little beavers. Anyways, we got a lot of uh, amber at our hand. We could now learn ancient sewing techniques to uh, get our coat production up. That extra clay production sounds quite nice as well, but at this point I am most interested in buying that flower and the tools to open up more caches. In all honesty, that's just what we need. And I'm also going to, let's see, yeah, we can't afford the food. Let's just keep it like that. Here goes our amber and a pack of building materials, just like that. And we have done another wonderful transaction. 
Okay, so at this point we can safely just open up another clade whenever we uh, finished the uh, previous one. We are also able to easily put up yet another nice little plantation here. And this is one of the situations which I rarely experience, but it's a thing where we just have so much raw food income that our city can live off of that. I mean, it's still, to me personally, oh, that didn't work, imperative that we need to get a uh, complex food production going ASAP, but, well, can't wait. It's not that much of a pressing matter right now. I'm not going to employ any humans on this part here, as this won't be working out anyways. Bye bye, Sahilda. So it's going to be 24 minutes now until Zork comes back. That is uh, two years. So yeah. In the meantime, though, we're uh, a very, very happy city. The lizards are steaming with happiness. So that's one thing that we don't need to worry about. We're uh, very soon going to have yet another hearth. Jeez, still not. As soon as we fi uh, fixed it into the clearing here. As you can see, sometimes it's a real... Uh, it's a real burden to, to get that down. Anyways, I'm going to put down these guys here at the plantation anyways. Because we, we can just uh, sit it out. We are at that point that I mentioned in a previous couple of episodes where... We basically don't need the many people anymore that we're uh, constantly attracting. That's the point in the game where it is really good if you have uh, industries that take up a lot of workers. Are we out of Wildfire Essence? Yes, we are. So, yeah. Wildfire Essence is a resource that you sometimes get from quests, from stashes at times. But all in all, it is a very rare an important resource to expand your cities with. So, since we have to house these people, we're going to build a couple of houses and we gained yet another two points of reputation. Let's see, we got the cookhouse up and running, but uh, that ain't that interesting. The brickyard would provide me finally a production of uh, bricks and pottery. Could also make crystallized dew to automate our tool production. But tell you what, I'm all for... Nah. We're going to go for the Brickyard, as this is uh, currently the uh, the one industry that we're still pr uh, doing very, very haphazardly. Alright. So the abandoned caches have been opened. That's really good for us. We now need to find more of them, as the output of tools should be uh, pretty good at this point. Yep, just like I thought. So, we can't easily keep that going, but for that, we need fresh caches. So, let's see. We have produced the pottery that I wanted, and we can now safely enable the biscuit production. This will only work as long as we have flour, and sadly we won't have flour that long. And here, something happened with the lizards. Well, lizards turned sour. They don't uh, yield reputation anymore, because there is an effect in the game. Ah, there's the rain mill. Wonderful. That works as follows. Whenever a species produces a point of reputation, their threshold goes up according to their decadence level. Yes, there's decadence. So every species is uh, different in decadence. The beavers are the least decadent, and that means whenever the beavers gain a point of uh, happiness, uh, point of reputation due to happiness, their threshold moves up very slow. So there we go. We go for this event uh, thing here, as this is easy to fulfill, and. Definitely go for the human majority thing, because that's easy to fulfill as well. Alright. So, 
So I'm, I'm really baffled that this works out that well, but uh, yeah, it does. Once we have the rain mill up and running, we'll have a constant input of flour, and that should be the threshold where we start winning the game from, because there's really not much that can't stop us now. If we put up three more points here, we are at that point. If we now cut open more glades, we will eventually find more things to win the game with. So here goes finally the brickyard, allowing me to raise this place. Never pleased me to begin with. And we're going to go for that first. And we could now also produce our own crystallized dew, by the way. This is made out of herbs and uh, rainwater, but, uh, well, I don't know. Well, why not? We can do it, I guess. Let's build a rain collector so I can showcase that as well. So we're truly autonomous in every conceivable way. That is really cool. Like, uh, that is uh, luxury. You rarely see that in uh, Against the Storm in that uh, severity. All right, so new cornerstone is being delivered. Survivor bonding is really good. Just a 10% speed for everybody and even more resolve. And at this point, now we're going to favor the humans a bit. You see, we got a lot of humans, and check this out now. The humans provide 0.25 points of reputation per second. So... That's pretty decent, isn't it? And we're going to pick up a couple more of them. It's a momentary burst downwards. So, at the rain mill we are merely providing flour. I don't think we need that many people here. So here again I set up a limit, because I don't want all my uh, roots to be ground into flour. And here you see that. The more people we got, the more happiness uh, they, they produce per minute. <laughs> and basically at this point, all we are waiting for is this to fill up. We can safely also call a new trader, as we are filthy rich currently. That 0.5 penalty to uh, to the Queen's impatience doesn't matter anything at this point of the game. Jeez, another herb garden. This place, I tells you. All right, Forgotten Temple of the Sun. If we provide a couple of tools, we can even push out a bit more reputation. That is exactly what we want. Although the rewards here would be also useful at a different time of the game. So here goes the same. We just push out the tools like crazy. And that is one that we won't be opening like that. The Forbidden Glades, well, let's just say they are optional. In most of my games, I didn't even use them at all. And I was very fine with that. So don't push yourself thinking that you need to, to go for these. It's not the case. So we're buying ourselves some flour, jerky. Ah, this guy is really not providing anything that we really need. Too bad, too bad. We can build some extra, we can buy some extra um, root. But all in all, this uh, uh, bad boy won't provide that much happiness for the city. But it ain't that much of a big deal, as we now basically just need to fast forward a bit. Because, as you see it, there's... What should st uh, what, what should really stop us at this point? There's uh, not much, in my humble opinion. Because I just want to show it to you real quick. At the rain collector now, we can start collecting rainwater. And with that rainwater, we can now... Um, where was it? Pressing left control. Yeah, at the brickyard. We can now also tell them to produce crystallized dew, allow them to use any type of rainwater, and just put up no limits to their production, as we have stupid amounts of uh, anything anyways. We might even use that resin that is not used at all, and now we even have the material at 
endless disposal uh, disposal that we that we need for for this so yeah here we can go for the smokehouse we might not have much meat to put, to transform into jerky but who knows what we'll be finding on the next uh, glade and as you see there we're uh, yeah we just need to open up one more dangerous glade that's that so Let's win the game, shall we? So at this point, I'm just looking for the victory points. You see, there's just no reason for me to stress myself out in any uh, other direction anymore. I am doing things here and there, but I'm mostly waiting for my victory points from the human population to trickle in, as this is the most uh, valuable resource right now. And as soon as they have... Uh, past that threshold, we have already won the game. We would have even win the game harder as soon as we open up the next glade. And it showcases really, really well that, ah, here the decadency uh, kicks into game. Let's see, can we, can we do a trick? We can. So, lowered the hostility back to zero and they're uh, producing again. But we could easily just favor the uh, other species in town, just, uh, buy some stuff that beavers like, for example, allow them to use that wine. There's plenty of options, but we're going to turn in these rewards. And that's that. Victory complete. So that's our first victory in the pocket. And since we have a bit of time left, I'm going to go over the upgrades that we're, that we're going to buy in this episode before we go next episode deeper into this uh, land. I'm going to play another round of Royal Woodlands, I think. Probably. Yeah, I'll see about that. Not important right now. So, here at this point, the very first upgrades that we require is obviously, let's see, these three things here. We cannot even buy anything specific because we're locked behind the level. I expected more, but uh, the most fundamental thing is that we have now unlocked the Obsidian Archive, which unlocks achievements, and achievements provide even more experience rewards, so from that point on, we will level up faster. So we need to win once more to actually showcase something here, but whatever, it was a good and fine run. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to drop me a comment and ask away what you want to ask. Consider a thumbs up if you enjoyed that one and you want to show the algorithm that can safely recommend that video. And of course, a subscription would be really nice. Check out the description box. You'll find various links to Discord, Twitch, and PayPal, Patreon, and buy me a coffee there. So thanks to the supporters. Thanks to you watching that video up until the very end. And a wonderful day to you. Bye-bye.